Is it safe? Can I... Can I talk about this yet? Lilith, are you gonna put me in jail? Oh, you announced it officially. Oh, I'm still going to jail? Okay, well, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so today we are actually going to talk about Legendary Boudicca Prime and Henry V coming to Rise of Kingdoms. And I'm gonna give you guys the truth behind Legendary Boudicca and the other Prime Commanders, and then we're gonna go over the skills that were released here today. Okay, now the first thing we have to talk about is Henry V. Boy, the haircut. And we're over here making fun of Edward, you know, banana helmet looking like a dork and whatever. But my man, bro, if Edward's a banana, then Henry's a mushroom. He's got to be a mushroom. Just look at his hair, man. It looks horrible. You got it. You got a whole helmet right here. Just go ahead and do us all a favor. Just plop that right on there and, and you're good to go. Just just don't just stop taking it off. OK, also, what's with the S's on his chest here? Is he supposed to be Superman? Are these supposed to be dollar symbols? What What is going on here? I, I really don't see the uh, the practicality be behind uh, a piece of armor that would look like this is it supposed to be suspenders are these the golden straps of the suspenders i don't know what's going on with henry v's design and honestly i don't really care that much this is all just sort of a joke but it does look like shit. <laughs> I mean, come on, it, it does. But Boudica is is looking good, okay? She's looking, she's looking fine. She's always looked pretty fine. I think her, her hair looks even better here than it has in the past. But we gotta talk about the truth behind Boudica, man, okay? Here's the truth, okay? Uh, and this is this is a multifaceted truth, okay? The first thing, the first thing that I, that I think is is true is that everyone is looking at CPO Prime, they're looking at Boudica Prime, and they're like is Lilith running out of ideas and I don't think they are okay and I'm going to explain why I'm actually defending Lilith in this specific case and no it's not because they've been angry at me recently okay that is not why I legitimately have a reason but it's but it does seem to be kind of lazy especially when you know history is thousands of years old and there have there have been so many iconic commanders so many iconic war heroes across the entire globe that Lilith has access to to put into the game and yet this is the second time that we've seen them re-implement this same exact commander I genuinely think Lilith has a plan for these prime commanders that's what I think I don't understand look okay Lilith is not stupid okay despite what you might think they actually have a, a large team of people working on this game and they've been working on it for years and whether we like it or not all right the game is unarguably successful it is massively successful in multiple countries around the world and it has been for a long time so Lilith obviously knows what they're doing from a gameplay perspective from an art design perspective marketing whatever okay so when you look at uh, them re-implementing commanders you know they know that they have a whole bunch of commanders that they can implement from history and they're choosing not to and yet they're choosing to re-implement this same commanders they've got to be doing it for a reason okay it's not like they're copying the exact same design of Boudicca but just making her legendary no same thing with CPO they redesigned the character meaning they're actually not gaining anything by by they could have called this whatever they wanted and just called it a different character because it actually obviously it has some similarities but it's actually a different design which means they've had their art department whoever designs these commanders I think they outsource it they've had them work on a new model for these commanders Boudicca and Scipio even though they're already in the game right so if they were doing this from a lazy perspective they would have just used the same design and said yeah it's the same commander except he's legendary he's much better now when we put a p next to his icon and now he's golden they could have done that they didn't they went through the extra effort of and money that's the big thing they spent money okay paying a designer to make a new design for both of these commanders so you can't make the argument that it's out of laziness because they've already they've done all the work that they would have done for a new commander it's a new design it's uh, new skills it's 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 all new okay new talents everything it's basically a brand new commander with the same name so it's not out of laziness and I don't think it's out of ignorance either because they have some crazy commanders in this game that I never would have expected okay they put Pakal in the game they put Manatore in the game okay they have all the way from them to Lancelot to Charlemagne they have so many different historical figures which proves that they know that diversity is possible they have barely scratched the surface with the legendary commanders in history that they could pull from and yet despite both of those things they still went ahead and re-implemented CPO and 
Boudicca okay and my assumption this is my guess they have to have something up their sleeve as to why they're doing this I would love for them to implement some sort of prestige system right or prime system I guess we would call it a prime system but think about in Call of Duty okay you get to max level and then you prestige your account and everything gets reset and you start over from level one but now it's prestiged I'm thinking my guess and this is I'm hoping I'm hoping that Lilith does this man uh, is that they are going in the future to somehow come up with a system where you can trade in uh your progress on CPO or Boudicca for progress towards legendary CPO and legendary Boudicca okay that would just make sense because it's it's the same exact matter why else would they be doing this again I've already dismantled the idea that it's laziness that they that they're saving money they're not saving money by doing this okay and they know that they can pick other commanders in history and yet they're still not so why why would they be doing that my guess is and my assumptions and I'm hoping that this is true again this is based on nothing this is just what I would like to see in the game is some sort of system to take your expertise CPO and convert him into some amount of progress on a legendary CPO or your expertise Boudicca turn it into some amount of progress on legendary Boudicca because here's the thing when they first implemented legendary CPO I thought that it was more of a marketing thing right people love CPO they love his design he's one of the most viewed commanders on YouTube people look up CPO guides all the time when they're new players because he looks so cool he's a great marketing tool for rise of kingdoms my assumption was that's why they implemented uh cpo uh, prime because they wanted to capitalize on the popularity of that character Boudica, okay as much as in our circle we love Boudica, okay um i don't think she's that popular of a commander even within rise of kingdoms so my initial hypothesis of it being a marketing thing sort of falls short now and we also when they release cpo prime I assumed that they would add more but we didn't know for sure now we know for sure so here we are we have two commanders that are already in the game that they're reintroducing us stronger what could be the reason for that I'm hoping again this is my thought based on nothing I just hope that this happens that they implement some sort of feature to convert your old progress into new progress if they do this it's not like you know oh if you have epic uh, you know epic Boudicca expertise uh then you'll get a legendary Boudicca expertise when you hit season of conquest that's I would be willing to bet that they would not do that okay but if they implemented some sort of prime system that helps you upgrade from an old weaker commander to a new legendary that is relevant I think that would be very good for the game because that would help bridge the gap between new players and old players right by the if you're a brand new player today by the time you get to season of conquest you're not going to be able to compete even with the museum and relic buffs you're just not okay Nevsky very strong CPO very strong you have so many very strong new commanders in the game so if you have a prime system that will help new players upgrade a commander that they would have expertise by season of conquest which is an epic commander um and it gives them a good commander like Boudicca like CPO legendary right then perhaps that will help bridge the gap even more by having them start season of conquest with some progress on a good legendary that's my hypothesis that is based on nothing other than what I hope that they do okay now before we jump into the skills here I do want to talk about the skills here for a little bit if you've made it this far into the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel and go ahead and check and see if you're subbed about 80 percent of you guys aren't so you're probably not so just double check on that also they did say there is an official post saying mysterious civilization coming governors a mysterious civilization is coming to rise of kingdoms where are they from here you see a ton of sand okay you see some jewelry you see things that are iconic from Egypt this is the eye of Horus this is obviously Egypt okay there is I just cannot imagine a a, a civilization coming to the game at this point that isn't Egypt based on this and then this was posted on Instagram it says I will repay the Pharaoh's trust in me with my talents okay so I don't know what that means but they do mention the Pharaoh and clearly a pyramid here now they could be referencing uh you know Ark of Osiris but you know to post this on the same day that they post a new civilization is coming uh with you know with with Egyptian jewelry it's like we're getting Egypt okay we've got to be getting Egypt I don't know why they posted these as if it's some sort of big mystery so that's my assumption of course until it's in the game we don't know but like even back here it's hieroglyphics okay I've watched enough Yu-Gi-Oh in the day to know what exactly I'm looking at okay and boy when I tell you I am ready to Exodia obliterate my foes as Egypt civilization Exodia obliterate 
you best believe i'm ready for it boys i'm ready for it i want it and i'm excited for this civilization to come especially if it's egypt okay with that out of the way let's talk about boudica legendary boudica prime uh now that i am allowed to talk about legendary boudica prime and i know a lot of you guys have probably seen this on other content creators channels uh, and you might be saying omniarch uh, you're late to the party no in fact i was actually so early to the party that i got in trouble okay so now let's talk about it uh the active skill 1000 rage requirement it says deals direct damage to the current target with damage factor of 2300 and increases their skill damage taken by 35 percent and reduces their march speed by 30 percent for three seconds this is a skill that i love now it doesn't have any aoe which is what i love about guan yu it's what i love about cpo legendary uh, but this is a good active skill the single target damage factor is insane and not only that the skill damage increase uh, that that, uh, that the target takes is massive right that's that's gonna be a big deal especially when you have boudica primary because then your secondary is gonna have a massive skill shot on that target i'm looking at nebu right i'm looking at ysg these commanders are gonna be so powerful gilgamesh even as a secondary to Boudica because of this. But on top of that, the 30% March speed reduction is actually going to be incredibly powerful in the open field for catching a target, bogging them down and swarming them down. It's going to be insane. That is a very powerful active skill. I wish there was AOE on it, but, but besides that, that's fine. Second skill says increases archer units attack by 30%, March speed by 10%. And then the archers will get 30% increased defense when you have fewer than 80% of units remaining um this is you know I, I I think this skill is fine you're getting 60 percent of battle stats which is insane plus a little bit of March speed the only thing that I don't like um is that of course a it's attack so like I would rather see some health here but also um under 80 percent kind of sucks um it could be worse right it could be worse but um I don't know I wish it would have just given like maybe 25 25 constant rather than 30 30 but one of them only triggers under 80 um but hey that, that that's me okay that's just what I think but either way solid pretty much on par with what we would expect um next we have the third skill it says reduces skill damage taken by troops by 35 percent while on the map that's huge especially again when you pair her with Nebu and I think that's going to be an insane pairing Boudicca Prime with Nebu oh my god you got the the AoE on Nebu and you got extra defense you have all damage increase on Nebu you have the skill damage taken reduction you're going to be quite tanky okay with these two commanders and you're going to be dealing a ton of damage to the targets now you also have a secondary effect on the skill that says when taking skill damage damage for the troops next normal attack has a 50 percent chance to increase by 25 percent and a 25 percent chance to increase by 50 percent this can trigger once every second seven seconds so this is a long cooldown but you have to you have to take a look at this there's a 75 percent chance that this will get triggered when you take skill damage as long as there's no cooldown which is crazy that's a bit there's a like you're gonna have this is gonna happen very frequently and of course it's only for a single normal attack but hey that's still nice extra little chip damage there then we've got this is out of order we've got the fourth skill on the bottom here it says shield of the ancestors when attacking troops troops receive healing with a healing factor of 800 after using active skills and archers deal five percent increased damage to infantry the healing effect can only trigger once every seven seconds we're seeing longer cooldowns here on Boudicca probably because when they were testing her she was just so powerful now one of the things that makes um Richard super good in 1v1 fights uh is that he's just healing himself over and over and over again which keeps him alive in the open field I think that's going to be very useful here again especially because she's going to be pretty tanky right she gives you 30 percent defense under 80 percent plus when you pair with Nebu to be even more tanky it's just like my god that's crazy um next let's look at her expertise it says increases damage dealt by archers by 10 percent flat all damage increased by 10 percent is crazy good for an expertise when under control effects the troops uh this troop has an 80 percent chance to dispel them this does not list a cooldown here okay so what are control effects well theodora's expertise actually removes more than just control effects but for control effects specifically it says silence disarm and heal immunity so that means if she gets hit by a commander that would normally prevent her healing from going off she has an 80 percent chance after just of that just not applying which is crazy good also the silence is going to be nuts dude Guan Yu is all over the place in the open field and the fact is that when you hit this troop with the Guan Yu's AoE if it hits with the silence there's an 80 percent chance that it goes away which is again that's actually nuts because there's no cooldown here okay there's no cooldown here there's a huge probability that it's always going to go off uh and that is actually nuts dude 
this is going to be a very very good legendary commander um is it on par with cpo and nevsky we will have to see um i would be willing to bet that it is uh and i think my assumption is that this will be on the wheel of fortune i have no idea um but it's a versatility commander and we often see versatility commanders on the wheel of fortune um again it is also a skill commander skill based commander and i think that is a very solid talent pool to pick from and i do think i do think that she will be a great primary commander for a lot of people to invest in even as five five one one this is going to be an insanely good commander okay massive skill damage 60 percent of stats you get some march speed and here you'll reduce the skill damage you take by 15 percent and you'll have a chance of dealing a bunch of extra damage here for a single turn but also you're going to get a uh, one percent increased damage to infantry which is whatever and you'll still get the 400 healing factor that's half as good as the full value here so like that's fine uh, if you wanted to you really you could go to five 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 one and you get the bonus uh on that third skill fourth skill is is fine but you still get most of the value at five 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 one so even as a budget investment Boudica is going to be great and I'll be even happier if she's on the Wheel of Fortune because then free to play players will have a shot at obtaining her. All right, baby, let's take a look at Mushroom Helmet Henry, okay? I love how they designed him with a sword in his hand, but then they were like, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's an archer commander. We got to put a bow in the back here. Like, a... anyway, okay. He has, again, 1000 range requirement on his active skill, 2300 single target damage factor, and reduces the troops' skill damage taken by 30% for five seconds five seconds that is as long as we see julius caesar's active skill go off or ragnar when he's expertise that's a long time and with the right rage engine this can be up forever you can have this up forever you throw a horn on them you have a couple of williams and joan of arcs nearby it is possible after a few uh, turns to have this up five out of six turns or six out of six turns if you're lucky with the horn and my god that is going to be super versatile in the open field especially with rallying which he does do he has a the conquering and support trees very interesting stuff here next heal says when attacking strongholds and governor cities troops deal 30 percent more counterattack damage and have a 10 percent chance to increase damage taken by the target by 30 percent for three seconds guys this is what archers needed archers needed a rally that was hard to swarm and taking 30 percent more counterattack damage is going to be crazy especially when he's taking less skill damage as well and you could pair him with somebody like Boudica with that we just looked at who's going to have insane single target damage factor she's also going to have a, a little bit of tankiness under 80 percent with the with the defense she's got healing it's going to be nuts okay it's going to be nuts if we take a look at the third uh sorry that oh I'm sorry that was the third skill weird these are out of order let's look at the second skill it says increases our Ar archer units attack by 20 percent and their defense by 20 percent they will also gain 20 percent increased march speed outside of alliance territory so if you stack this on top of Boudica right you're getting 50 percent attack all the time 30 percent March speed all the time this this rally is going to be going crazy through the open field okay and then on top of that you get uh 50 percent defense under 80 percent but until you hit that at least you get the 20 percent here which is nice let's take a look at the fourth skill archers led by this commander deal 10 percent more damage we see it again it's just another 10 percent damage it's just a vanilla instant power boost it's crazy good okay when attacked there's a 10 percent chance to deal direct damage to the to the target uh with a damage factor of 800 this triggers once every five seconds this is again anti swarm technology is built in to mushroom helmet henry that is nothing to laugh at 800 damage factor is almost as good as el Cid's active skill okay just to give you an idea of how outdated el Cid is, is at this time it's crazy that they're the same rarity that doesn't make any sense to me finally the expertise says when a troops rage reaches 70 percent they deal 30 percent more normal attack damage otherwise they take 20 percent less normal attack damage so again you try to swarm this rally down well great news if it's marching from the city to the point where it's hitting it's not going to have any rage okay which means it's going to take 20 percent less normal attack damage which is crazy you're just not going to be able to swarm this thing down it's just not going to be possible if you try you'll get punished here you're going to get punished by the extra counterattack damage and then if you try to swarm it while it's hitting a structure you're going to take 30 percent more normal attack damage when it's uh at 70 percent rage it's nuts okay this is probably going to be rally meta or archers perhaps rally meta for the game we will have to see how that actually plays out and how well Flavius and Zenobia and those characters will stand up against uh, uh Henry V and again I do think 
Henry V with uh with Gilgamesh Henry V with even Nebu Henry V with uh, Boudicca Prime these are going to be insane insane rally combinations that we will definitely see a ton of here in Rise of Kingdoms anyway guys my thoughts and opinions on this mean nothing without yours in the comments section below would you like to see a prime system that allows you to trade progress on your epic to your legendary do you think that Lilith would ever do something like that I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below as well as what do you think of Boudicca Prime and Henry V I would love to hear from you down there while you're down there make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video it helps out the channel a ton subscribe to the channel if you're new here and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace